In today's video, I'll show you how to install and configure Plex Cache. Plex Cache efficiently transfers media from the on deck watch list to the cache and moves watch media back to their respective locations. This Python script reduces energy consumption by minimizing the need to spin up the array hard drives when watching recurrent media like TV series. Let's get Plex Cache set up. Before we get started, have you signed up to receive our newsletter? It's a monthly publication with unread news, written out guides, and more. Also, come join us on Discord. It's a growing community where you can post questions and answers to tech questions, along with just hanging out with like-minded people. Join now so you don't miss out. I've left links to both down in the description. Since this is a Python script, we need to make sure that Python 3 is installed in our Unraid system. Prior to Unraid 7, Nerd Tools was the go-to option to get Python installed. Nerd Tools is no longer supported, so now we have to use Python 3. And I've done a video on Python 3 already, and I'll leave a link to that description down in the description. If you haven't got it installed in your system, it's a real quick video. It only takes a minute or two to get installed. Go ahead and pause this. Go do that if you need to. The other thing we're going to need to get installed is user scripts. And I've got a video for that as well, so I'll leave a link to that too. Under the installation. First thing we need to do is go up to the top right to the terminal icon here. Click into that to open it up. And then we need to type in PIP3 install requests with an S. Press enter. Once the requests are installed, we need to install the Plex API. To do that, go ahead and type in PIP3, and then install, and then Plex API. Then press enter. Once those two are installed, go ahead and type exit and hit enter, and that'll close out that window. Working on this video made me realize that even though I have a degree in computer science for programming, I really preferred the support side of IT, and that was the focus of my IT career. And as a result, I haven't coded much in years, and I thought that it might be a good idea to get back into the swing of things. And lately, I've been brushing up on my skills using Brilliant. Brilliant is a self-paced, but guided, easy way to learn. Here's a pretty simple Python example. With bite-sized lessons that are both quick and fun. You can choose from 60 plus courses with topics such as science, programming, and computer science, data analysis, math, logic, technology, and more. No matter what your level is, Brilliant has something for everyone. Like with programming, you can start off with easy exercises to get an understanding of how programming works. Then you proceed to actual coding. And let's say you don't know what the answer is or you got it wrong. You can see the answer below and then you can ask, why is that right? And it actually gives you an explanation of why that is the correct answer. Brilliant's pretty brilliant. Gamify your learning with Brilliant. Join more than 10 million users and start brushing up on your skills today. To try everything Brilliant has to offer free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash alientech42 or scan the QR code on the screen, or you can click the link in the description. Using that link, you also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. All right, moving on. Now we're gonna open up a new tab and we're gonna go to Bexum's GitHub site so we can get the script. I believe that's how you say it anyhow. And I'll leave the link to the script down below so you can just go grab it there. And we need to copy the script here. So over on the right, we're gonna find the copy raw file icon and click onto that. Once that's copied, let's go open a text editor, and my favorite one is Notepad++. Open up a new file here, if you don't have one already, click into it, and then just paste that script in. Now I'm going to scroll all the way to the top. Once you're back at the top, what we're looking for is this line here that says script folder equals, and then it's going to have a, a location. This is the location where the script's going to go. If you followed any of my other videos where I've done scripts, I put them in my app data folder. So I'm going to go ahead and show you here what my location is. So it's gonna be the slash MNT slash user. We're gonna get rid of system and I'm gonna put in data and then scripts. I'll get rid of Plex cache. That's the only change we need to make. All right, we need to save this. So we're gonna go up to file, go to save as, and I'm gonna to browse to my server, which is for me gonna be backslash backslash 10.0.0.11. Whatever your server is, you put in your server's IP obviously. And then mine's gonna go under the data share and then under a folder I have in there called scripts which is what we edited in that file. We'll go there, make sure it's there. We are in there. Then down at the file name, we're gonna change this so it is plexcache.py. Make sure everything is correct. It's in the right location, file name is correct, and we'll hit save. Then I'm gonna open up another tab and I got another site to go to. It's the same site, but different file. This is the setup file. Once again, we're gonna click on the copy raw file, go back to our text editor, which is right there. I'm going to do new file, file new, and we'll paste in the script here. 
and I'm going to save it to the same location. So go up to File, Save As. I'm still in the same location here, so that's good. We'll change the file name here instead of a text file. We want this to be called Plex Cache underscore setup.py. Hit Save. So now let's go open the terminal in Unraid. The icon for it is right up here in the top right. We'll click in there, and we got to browse to that location. So I'm going to go with CD, a space, a couple dots, press Enter. That'll go back to the root directory. Now I'm going to type CD space slash MNT slash user slash data slash scripts. That's the location that I saved those files in. Go ahead and double check your path to make sure it's correct, which is, should be slash MNT slash user slash data slash scripts, depending on where your scripts folder is at or where you stored the files. Whatever that location is, is where you want to be. Once you know it's correct, go ahead and hit enter. It should go right to that location. Let's do an LS just to make sure that we're actually in the right location which is going to list the files out. And you'll see that I've got a couple different Python scripts in there, a deluge mover, another mover script, and then the two Plex cache files that we just created. Now we want to type Python 3, a space, and then Plex cache, the name of the file here, Plex cache underscore setup dot py. And that'll run the Python script. We press enter. And at this point, we just follow the prompts. It says uh, it can't find the file because it doesn't exist. So it's going to create one. Are we sure this is the right location? Yes. And if you look at the uppercase and lowercase here, anything that's uppercase here is the default option. So you can just press enter and it'll default to whatever the, the uppercase letter is here. So in this case, it's a yes. Just going to hit enter and it's created the file successfully. Then we'll ask our Plex server address. And if you look at the examples here, it'll show you basically what it's looking for. I don't have mine through an outside you know web address. So I'm going to do this example here. Mine is going to actually be HTTP colon forward slash forward slash then my server's IP address, which is 10, not 14, 10.0.0.11, and then the colon, and then the port number for Plex is 32400. If yours is something different, obviously you'd change it to fit whatever your port number is. Double check, make sure it's right. 10.0.0.11, 32400, that all looks good. I'm gonna press enter. Then it's gonna want my Plex token. To do that, we're gonna have to open up Plex. So I'm going to drag this terminal window off to the side, and I'll drag it back in a minute here after we get Plex opened up. Open up a new tab. Uh, it's been a while since I've opened the demo one here. All right, so I got Plex open. Now to get the API key out of Plex, it's a couple steps, but it's pretty easy. Let me show you how to do that. In Plex, you can find any library item, but you have to be like on an actual movie or on the actual episode. And in the bottom of it, you'll find these three dots listed here. You'll see each one of them when you hover over it. It shows up. Click on those dots. Go all the way to the bottom, click on the Get Info. At the very bottom of that new window that pops up, you'll see View XML. Go there. Then in the address bar, the URL bar up here, all the way over to the right. All the way. Scroll all the way over there. You'll see where it says XPlex token equals, then a random string of letters and numbers. That random string is your API key. So I'll highlight that and then copy it. Now let's go back to our terminal window. I'll drag that back over here. We'll paste in our token here. So right click, paste, then press Enter. And it says Plex is running on Linux, which is correct. Then it's going to list out the first library here, which is, for, in my case, movies. Do you want to include this library? And we do. So we're going to hit yes. And I press enter. And do you want to do TV shows? Yes. Like I said before, the Y is highlighted. Just going to hit enter. And it selects it. Do you want to include the music? That I don't want to include. So I'm going to hit no. Same with photos. I don't need that. And then it wants to know how many episodes do you want it to fetch at a time. So how many do you want to put on deck to be waiting to be queued up. The default is five. I think that's a fair number, so I'm gonna leave it at five. Just press enter. And then the maximum age of media on deck. So it's gonna look at the history of how far back something has been viewed. And if I haven't watched a, a TV show in yeah three months or something like that, I probably don't care if it's in the, the cache part of it. So that's probably too many. You know, 99 here is what it's default. I think it's a little much for me. If you're going to go back that far and have stuff cached, that's fine. You're just going to set it to a number that you think is good. For me, 30 days is probably good. If I haven't watched something in a month, I'm probably not going to go back to it right away. So I'm going to change that to 30 and press enter. And then it says, do you want to fetch your watch list media? And I'm going to say no. I don't need any of that added because if I pull up a movie that um, isn't a watch list thing, then I, I can wait the extra two seconds for it to spin up the drives. Not a big deal. TV show episodes, since you know our family watches those pretty much every night, it's kind of nice to just have those up immediately. And then do you want to fetch the on-deck media watch list for other users? And you can do yes or no on this one. 
I don't have any other users, so I'm going to do no. But if you do, go ahead and hit yes. My main account, my you know production machine, I do have multiple accounts. And then I did go through and do yes and set up those for the different users. And if you do choose yes, it's, it's going to list the user and say, do you want to skip this user? You can do yes or no. And next here, you'll see that it says, do you want to move the watch media from the cache back to the array? So once it's been watched, do you want it to move it back to the array? And yes, we do. So answer yes there and move forward. And it says define the watched cache expiry duration in hours. So how many hours do you want it to set there after it's been watched? Uh, the default is 48 and I think that's fine. This is my demo server, so I don't really need it. I'm just going to change it to 24. After 24 hours, it'll move it back after it's been viewed. And then it wants to know the location for the path to your cache drive. So in this case, wherever your cache drive is. And if you've been following my other videos, then you can just put in what I'm going to put in here, which is slash MNT slash uh, cache slash data slash media. And then press enter. Test this given path. I don't need to, so I'm going to hit no. And it's defaulted to no anyhow. Then insert the path where your media files are located. So that's going to be where the actual files are on the array. So we're going to go slash MNT slash user slash data slash media because they are in the data share in a folder called media. Press enter. Do you want to test this path? And I'm going to go with no again. Next, it's got enter the corresponding NAS unraid library folder for Plex mapped folder of movies in this case. The movies here is what's listed inside a Plex. So if you had something like 3D movies or something different, then that name would be, you know, set according to whatever the the folder structure inside of Plex. So all the movies are in what location in Plex? The movies are in the movies location. So that is correct. We'll press enter. Same with TV. My TV stuff is named TV in there. Those are the defaults anyhow. The next option here is saying that if there's an active session in Plex, like it's playing something, do you want it to exit the script? And I don't. So I'm going to leave it at no and move on. How many files do you want to move from the array to the cache at any given time whenever the script runs? The default is five, and I think that's fine. If you're watching more than five episodes of one show in a night, then you'd probably want to increase that up to you know whatever the number fitting for you is, 10, 15. So five is good. Going to hit enter. The next thing here is how many files do you want to move from the cache to the array at the same time? So let's say you've watched you know four episodes. Do you want it to move all four? Do you want it to move you know only two of those? Whatever the number is. And the default is two, and I think that's a, a fine number. So if it if you've got five there and you've watched three of them, it's going to move two back. The next time it runs, the next 24 hours, it'll move the one that you watched before plus another one. Hopefully that all makes sense. So leave it on two and continue. Then the last option here is, do you want to debug the script? I don't see any point in it, so I'm going to hit no. And then it finishes up with, thanks for using Bexum's script. And like I said, I think that's how you pronounce the, the name here. And then he's got listed a link to his GitHub page for this Plex Cache script. And then the last line here, I want to shout out to Bexum for this wonderful quote from Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Nicely done. So long, and thanks for all the fish. If you haven't read those Hitchhiker books series, it's it's pretty entertaining. It's a good read. All right, once that's done, go ahead and type exit. Now let's go back to our Unraid server, and we're going to go over to user scripts. So we're going to go to settings and look for user scripts down at the bottom here, which is right here. I'm going to favorite this one as well. If you're not familiar with the favorites, there's a new feature with Unraid 7. Once you create a favorite, there's a little option up here that shows up as favorites. You can click into it. Whatever you got favorited will just show up here. Makes it quick and easy to get into stuff. And there's user scripts we just favorited, so we'll click into there. So now we're going to need to add new script. In the bottom left here, I'm going to scroll down. You'll see add new script. I'm going to go ahead and click into that. we got to enter a script name. We'll call this one Plex Cache, all lowercase, then press OK. We'll find a Plex Cache in the list here. There it is. We're going to hover over the little cogwheel icon and then go up to edit script. We're going to leave line one alone here. So jump down to line two. In here, we want to put in Python 3 a space, then slash mnt slash user slash data slash scripts, which is the location we put the scripts into, and then forward slash, and then the name of the script itself. In this case, it's going to be the plex cache.py. Once again, that's going to be Python 3 space forward slash mnt forward slash user forward slash data forward slash scripts forward slash plex cache.py. Once you've got that all correct, go ahead and hit Save Changes. We'll find Plex Cache back here in the list. And over on the right here, where it says Scheduled Disabled, 
We're going to change this to daily. Right there, scheduled daily. Then we're going to click run in the background to run it right now. And then hit done. And that's it. Now, once a day on the daily schedule, it's going to run that script in the background. It's going to take any files that are on deck that are, you know, queued up to be watched next and move those over to your cache drive. And then after 24 hours or 48 hours, whatever you had it set at, it will move them back to the array. So now when you have your disk spun down and you go to play a, a file that's on deck, it's just going to instantly pop right up and start playing because it's going to pull it off the cache drive, which is hopefully an SSD. And it's just going to be a lot quicker than a, a standard spinning drive. If you're like me and you have the power savings stuff turned on, you have the drives going to sleep, it's not going to have to spin them up and look for the file and take that extra, you know, couple seconds to get that done. Saves wear and tear on the drives. They're not running all the time. It's kind of nice. If you found this video helpful, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel and check out one of these next. And I'll see you in the next one.